Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite techniques. I think perhaps the most underrated technique in NLP, maybe. I don't know. It's a great technique. It's called the new behavior generator. And in this video, I'm not going to give you the steps of the technique. That'll be coming in a video tomorrow. Pay attention for that. Uh, instead, today, I want to talk about why the new behavior generator works, how it works, so that you get a deeper understanding of your own unconscious behavior so that you can make changes. Let's get into it. So here I am yesterday. And uh, I think perhaps the, the best thing about being a neurolinguistic programmer is getting to use NLP on yourself. And I was frustrated. Uh, one of the things that I have to do for my business is I have to book discovery calls. If you're a coach, whether you're an NLP coach or whatever, actually, if you're in any sales business, service-based business, there are really two metrics that we really have to track for the success of your business. One is number of quality calls booked with potential new clients. The second is client results. And if you have those two things, what you're doing is you're creating a very, very effective business, right? The better your client results, the more testimonials, more referrals, et cetera, et cetera. The more discovery calls booked you have, the more clients you will have. And I was frustrated because I was setting appointments ineffectively. I had been on and I was trying to book calls for about two and a half hours. And I hadn't booked a single call. I had not gotten one person to say yes. And I was beyond frustrated. I was a little bit um, disappointed. And I was kind of like, what am I doing here? What's going on? And then I had that magic moment where as a neurolinguistic programmer, you get to zoom out on your behavior and look at yourself. And you get to put your coaching hat on and say, okay, if I was coaching myself here, right? And so I did just that. And I applied the new behavior generator. I realized that as I was setting appointments, I had a certain mental movie running inside my mind. And that mental movie was one in which it was difficult to get appointments, uh, struggling to do it, nobody saying yes to me. And so I realized, oh my God, I'm programming this result. I'm literally programming myself so that people aren't saying yes. So I stopped. I very quickly made a mental movie of me generating appointments easily and effortlessly, having a rapport with people right away and people being excited to be on calls with me. And in the next 20 minutes, I had somebody ask me to do a discovery call. Whereas over the last two and a half hours, no, 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 no. And then all of a sudden, one quick visualization later, and somebody's asking me to book a discovery call with them. It's very different, very, very different result. And here's why. Remember that when you do the new behavior generator, what you're doing is you're giving your unconscious mind a reference experience for how you want things to go. So that's one thing you're doing. Let, let me give you the overview first. So you're giving yourself a reference experience. You're priming your RAS, and we'll talk about that in a moment, and you're resetting expectations, okay? So here's an experiment for you. When you think about expectations and reference experiences, those two things really kind of go hand in hand. So if I ask you right now, and I would, I would invite you to do the experiment, have the learning, stick your hand up as high as it will go in the air, right? You suck your hand up as high as it would go. Now, if I ask you, stick your hand up even higher than you did before, even higher, right? You can do that. You can stick your hand up a little higher. And then if I ask you, stick your hand up even higher than that, you can really reach for it. Now, if I keep going with that, you would have to make adjustments to go higher and higher and higher. But how come the first time I said, stick your hand up high, right? It stopped here. Because you have a referent, you have an expectation, you have a preset idea of where that's going to go. But if I ask you to take it higher, you go shrink, right? This is the same thing when it comes to anything we're going after. And in your business, in your personal life, in your relationships, you have a referent 
for what things are going to do, how far they're going to go, how people will respond to you. These are expectations that we then project out onto the world and we create self-fulfilling prophecies. There's a great piece of uh, psychology research called the Pygmalion effect where our ideas, our references for what's going to happen, then influence how other people treat us. So if you become convinced that you are attractive, charming, you know, uh, successful, that people want to do business with you, then if you're convinced of that, if that becomes your reference experience, if you become convinced that you get amazing results for your clients, if you become convinced that you're going to make money, you will create that self-fulfilling prophecy. If on the other hand, you have a different referent experience running in the theater of the mind, then you're going to create that as well. So what this does, the new behavior generator gives us a chance to reset that referent experience. Now, it also trains the RAS, and this is the second thing that it does. So the RAS is your reticular activating system. This is the, the, this is the perceptual filters that are present. At any given moment, your brain is telling your eyes what to look for and sort for in the environment. If you're a fan of this channel, you've heard me talk about the luck experiments, where they take people who perceive themselves to be lucky and people who perceive themselves to be unlucky. And the people who perceive themselves to be lucky, they will literally find opportunities in the environment that the people who are unlucky do not find. So RAS, when you do the new behavior generator, and in particular, uh, in my case, it was a communication context. So it was the context of reaching out to people. You're tuning your RAS to look for the people who will say yes to you. You're tuning your nervous system to communicate in a way in which people will say yes to you. This is useful. So remember that you have an opportunity at any given time to take whatever the reference experience is, whatever the result is, and then train your mind to go beyond it. This is what Roger Bannister did. Roger Bannister, when he broke the four minute mile, he was seeing himself breaking the four minute mile over and over and over. And when he did it, and all the other runners did it before him, they were using him as the referent. So you can do this technique. It will be very useful. Tomorrow, I'm going to share the steps of the technique. So making sure you're liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the bell. So this algorithm knows that you want to see more of this. Talk to you soon.